Good evening. I'm uh, Jim Hickey, and I've been asked uh, to do a demonstration on how to do uh, bow tie router inlays. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, first of all, I want to start about uh, with what we need in order to make a bow tie inlay, and this is what I'm talking about. The bow tie inlay. These are examples that I've had using different sizes of of bow ties. So what do we need to do this? First of all, you need a router and you need a plunge router. Um, I think it would be very difficult to do this if you didn't have a plunge router um, and I'll get into why that is a little bit later. Uh, the second thing that we need in order to do this is the material we're working on which in this case is, a, is going to be a bench and it has this check in it, a long check in it, as you can see uh, and I decided to put three bow ties in it of different sizes into this to stop the checking. Uh, this will be a leg once this bench gets made. The different sizes are uh, what we need next after this piece is, a, is a, what we're going to use to put the bow tie, uh, to make the bow tie out of. In this case, it's a piece of bubinga. I've already done one here, as you can see, the middle one, um, and we're going to use bubinga for the tie. You can use anything that you want, uh, preferably a harder wood, not a softer wood. Um, a lot of times I use uh, walnut. Most of the time is basically what I use. The next thing that we need are the templates. And we have two different kinds of templates here. This is a commercial temp template. It's a Jasper and it has seven different profiles on it. These run around $35 to $40, uh, Woodcraft has them, uh, and it's made out of acrylic, and it's set for the, the, the uh, template guide at a quarter inch. The, the ones I'm going to use tonight, though, uh, Jerry Couchman, one of our members, just uh, made up his own templates using the, the, the Jasper and used it to get uh, templates, and I put them on melamine. Um, I've used his templates to do that. And what that means is, is these are the different kinds of, of bow ties that you get from the different templates. So one across the top are, is the Jasper templates. You can see the different profiles. Once you get bigger, they get very, very fat in the middle. Jerry's, I like Jerry's. He made them a little slender, much more of a narrow waist there, and that's why I decided to go with that. And that's what we decided to do tonight. The next thing that we need is a template uh, inlay kit. And what I recommend highly, so you don't waste your money, is to go with, if you're going to invest in this, go with a white side number 9500 inlay kit. They run around $40 to $50. And what we have here is a um, centering post in order to center your bit into your router. This is the plate. This will be on most routers. A router plate, you can see on the, the Festool, it has the same thing. These are standard, and usually after the Porter cable ones. And basically, this is a template guide, and the template guide fits in there like that. The post will be put in your router in order to center this guide once you screw it together. Like that. Take it out of your router, and you put your bit in. Now, this inlay kit comes with a um, 1 8 inch down um, spiral, carbide spiral bit. And it's all calibrated together. The important thing about this inlay kit is you got to get a good one because, if you, because it has to be calibrated just exact so when you lay it in there, it goes in perfectly. And I found the white side is machined and engineered so it exact, exactly works out. You have two pieces of the, of the inlay kit, is the uh, template guide here, a small template guide, I don't know if you can see that, like that, and then a ring that was put on the outside of it. So you have two guides on this particular uh, template kit, okay? So that again is a white side, number 9500. In, uh, router inlay kit. So the next thing that we need 
we have the router, we have the uh, inlay kit put on the router, right here, and we have the material we're going to route into, and we have the material we're going to use to make the, make the uh, bow tie out of. The next thing we need, which is really, really important, <laughs> is, is a double stick tape. Now, there's different kinds of double stick tape. What I like to use is this IPG. I get it at hardware sales here in Bellingham. It's not very expensive, six or seven dollars a roll. Lasts a long time. And this is really good because you can stick your anything down with your double stick tape and bring it back up really easily and peel it off. There's others that are made. This is the, the uh, fast cap um, double stick tape. The thing about this is it will work, except this really is made to put things down almost permanently. And when you take this, you can get it back off. It's, it's tough, and it's really hard to get the, the stickum up off of it. So I wouldn't advise using this. It's a real pain in the neck for this type of thing. But if you want to stick something down permanently, this is the stuff to use. So again, this is the IPG. That stands for Intertape Polymer Group. Again, it's at hardware sales and I don't know if other places carry it or not. So, the first thing we're going to do is we, we lined up this inlay. Uh, this was donated to me and he, uh, George Knudsen's piece of wood. He wanted three um, bow ties on this particular check along here. Um, and with this, he picked out, we just took these we took the keys or the or the bow ties and laid them down to see where we wanted them to lay them out. So I've traced about where it's going to be with the template and where I'm going to lay it out. Now these templates, if you can see it here, is I got an arrow on them. Um, that's so that you know you orient how you're going to route your, your mortise and how you're going to route your bow tie. You use the same, same template for both the uh, mortise cutting and also for the bow tie. It's important on this one because uh, these are not precision. So you want to you want to run your bow tie the same direction. You know, to, to cut it and run it in the same direction. Now this Jasper one, I imagine this is precise. It's made out of acrylic. You could probably flip them around and everything and work out all right. But this one you don't. Even with this, I would still advise running it the same direction. So we're going to lay this down on here. And then what we're going to do, the, the router will have the, the, the collar on it to begin with, and that will cut the mortise. Um, what I like about the Festool, of course, everything is great about the Festool, but what I like about the Festool is I have the dust collection right on it, so it takes the dust out of it. If you don't, you're going to have a lot of dust crammed into the, into the cutout. Um, these... Um, Router kit, uh, the inlay kits, the, they'll do a depth. Imagine you can max them out maybe at a half inch deep, which you're really pushing it to do that. I've done about three eighths deep. Uh, it's not hard to cut the mortise with that, but it, when you're cutting the key out, when you're cutting the, the uh, this out, you have to cut it. You have to cut the depth and just one time around it. You'll see when I do that, in order to cut this out, and you're really pushing that bit if you're going a half inch deep. Depending on how hard the material is, um, you're pushing a bit. It's a carbide bit, but it's still, you know, it, you're stretching it a little bit. And if it doesn't break, sometimes with a router, uh, if you push it too much, the bit will start working its way out of the collet. And all of a sudden, you're cutting a lot deeper than you realized you were cutting. Um, the, uh, you can use any um, uh, plunge router that will take your, your uh, inlay kit. Again, I like the Festool because it has a dust collection on it. It takes out most of the chips. So what we're going to do, first of all, is take the template. It's going to be a number two here. Number two. The middle one, as you can see, is a number four. It's the top one. And the little one here is a number six. So we're going to do the number two. So I go on the back of this and take the double stick tape. Bear with me for a bit. You can really uh, utilize this really well by cutting it up. You lay it on here. You can see that. 
that. And like that. And then I cut a little bit. I like to use the melamine to do this because it's a good quarter inch thick. You need it for this inlay kit, you need it to be a quarter inch thick. It can't be shallower than that or you hold yourself off. This, this little collar, or this collar here is just shy of a quarter inch. And then I take this pull the tape up and off You can see it's very uh, light, but I have uh, my I have it outlined where I want the set. I'm going to run my arrows towards you, towards the camera. Going to lay it down in there, and that's about exactly where we want it to be. Push it down. This will not move, um, especially what what we're putting on it. So the, the pressure that we're putting on it, it won't move. I've got my router set, so this will cut approximately a quarter inch deep. And then I'll route out my mortise. And this material here is it's a 30 second plus thicker than a quarter inch. So that this should go into the mortise and give me a little bit to plane off or sand off once I put it in. So let's do that. And as we're doing the mortise, it really doesn't, you're not concerned about it because you're cleaning out the whole inside of this cutout. And uh, so there's, it's not critical, you can just run it wherever you want. So in, in this, I'm running only a quarter inch deep, so I'll take it all out at once. see that this is all the dust is kind of crammed in there but as I route out this whole inside of this it will clean it all out done with that I got the mortise so you just flip this up you can take that off uh, the tape's still on there I, re I don't usually reuse that tape I put new tape on just to be safe because it you know a lot of dust particles can get in there and stop it so you just peel the tape off and we're ready to go over and use this put tape on and use this to cut the um, bow tie out of Okay, so this is the mortise. Now what you'll see on that is, of course, what I need to do now is I put it the direction that I ran that mortise. So I put it in here, I put a little arrow, that that's the way I ran it. So that when I do this, I'm going to put an arrow on my key, on my, my bow tie, and run it like that. And you can see like this, and what you have here, because of the, of the nature of this bearing that's on there, is it's rounded. So the only thing you need to do here, if you're going to do it by hand, you have to square these off. So you have to take a, chis a chisel and square off the corners. And if you're going to get out of the lines, this is when you're going to do it. So I'll square those up. Now the, what you're governed by about the router cutouts on these templates is that bearing there, this collar right here, has to be able to go around your template all the way. So that is what you're, the, the only restriction you have. If you can make your own templates, the, the, if you do that and make real thin cutouts, then you have to do that by hand because this bearing has got to, this uh, bearing has got to be able to run all the way around it. Not you're doing it by hand. 
Take your time and cut these out. You can back cut, once you make the top, you can back cut a little bit. Okay, so there it is, they're squared out. Now we'll take our template. There's a couple of ways to do this. You can take a piece of, of, of any kind of wood, and you don't need a very big piece, as you can see here. This one is, is very narrow. You don't need a, a, a large piece, but you can take a thick piece and cut your, your bow tie into that, and then go to the bandsaw and cut it off. What I like to do, and the method I like, is to run my material the thickness that I want. In this case, this material is run, in, like I say, just a hair over a 30 seconds of, of, a, of a quarter of an inch. So this is a quarter inch deep, mortise is a quarter inch deep, this is a little bit bigger. And what you do is you take a sacrificial piece, you need a sacrificial piece, which is this piece of plywood right here, an old piece of plywood, in order to route through and get your key. And what I do is, on this, is that the key is going to be right there like that. It's going to be taken out of there. So what I do is I lay this, this, uh, this is secured down. We have to take this. I've already put the tape on the back of this. And then do it pretty solid on here because you want that, you don't want the bow tie to move. You want it to stay once you've cut it all the way through. All right, so you just take these off, place it down on here. It's going to be right about there. Okay. Now, this is solid, this is solid, this won't move. And now we have to take our template, the same template that you used to cut the mortise, is going to be used to cut this. I just go all the way around the template with the tape. This is the tedious part. Taking it off, I got it on the back. My arrow is going that way. I lay it right in here, get my grain direction the way I want it. And this is the most important part, is on your, on your um, bow tie, put an arrow as to where you're running that. Okay, now the next thing we need to do, these little buggers are a little bit hard, see here, is we got to take this ring off, take that off. And so we're cutting the, uh, the bow tie out of, with using this, the smaller ring here. So this is the reason why uh, you need to go to something that's calibrated perfectly. Now, this is the trickier part. I gotta set this as a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper. And we wanna cut about 5 sixteenths off of this. So you measure down from here, you cut a little bit over 5 sixteenths. That should cut through my stock into my sacrificial board. Now, this is the tricky part. This is the part where you need a plunge router. On this one, you're cutting out your key. So you don't want to go inside. With the mortise, we want to clear all the inside out of this. On this one, you don't. So basically, what you have to do is you have to plunge down, and you have to, to, to you run that guide around the circumference of that bow tie. And then when you've cut, you've gone all the way around, you want to pop it up and... Uh, there's no way that, you, I've tried it before, you can't go over it multiple times. You only get one shot at it, at the depth you're going. So let's see if it'll work. see that it's cut out and it is all the edges are sharp on that so what I'm doing on that I'll do it without the motor on is 
and, and that, without plunging it down. You plunge down in that corner. I, I usually go to the upper left hand corner. I don't know if that's necessary or not. And I plunge down, and then you push against the template, and you just follow it all the way along. Just feel your way around it as it's cutting. You don't want to go inside. If you do, you'll have to make another key. The thing about it is, when you take this ring off, make sure you don't lose it. <laughs> uh, put that somewhere where you can have it again once you want to make another mortise. So, we'll flip off this one. the template. We got tape here, tape there, take the tape off here. Okay, and you can see with the downside, it left debris in here. It didn't pick it up like it did on, uh, it just tight, but you'll, you'll find out it works out fine. Flip that up, and there is our cutout. See we have our arrow on here, and it's going to go in the same direction that we have this. And now what we have to do is kind of trim this up. There'll be a little bit of roll over on these corners. And then what you want to do, what I'm going to do right now, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but you want to bevel back on the back side. You want to cut back on your on your uh, bow tie, so that when you set it down in there. It will go in so you have to take your time and I use a razor knife you can use a chisel you could probably sand it if you wanted to okay you got to run your arrow with your arrow you want to set it there like that you can get a picture of that but anyway it sits there just like that okay so then I take my glue I use uh, let me see. type on three for about everything. And what I do is I put glue both in the mortise and on the piece. Um, my philosophy is the glue sticks to the glue. So you want a little bit, you don't want too much. You want to just take a little bit, put it in there, slap it up on the sides. Then you put it on the back of the, of the bow tie, get a nice coat on the back of it, and up the sides. Ends not so much. But you make sure your arrow is running in the right direction. Then take a, a hammer or something like that, tap it a little bit, make sure it's running through, and then you just pound it in. Standing up a little over 30 seconds. Clean off the glue. And you can let it sit for a while. You don't necessarily have to let it sit for a while, but uh, basically what you want to do now is what I do, I use a hand plane, a block plane. And I plane it off. This is the fun part. There you go. Pretty smooth. Not quite done, but it'll sand down. This has got to come down a little bit more. So there you have it. So we have two of the three in there. We have a number two bow tie. A number four bow tie in there. You can see how much different they are once you cut them out, how bigger they are in the templates. So. so this is the final result. After I put it in place, you can see it's very sharp at the ends. There's no gaps on this. This is almost plain smooth now. It'll sand down on the finish. Uh, and it went in the right direction. And it's not going to go anywhere. Um, they stay in there. 
I've actually put some in dry and they've been there a couple years later. So um, the glue will stick it in. And then I'll come back later on this and finish it up for the final one over here for the little one, which will be a number six, which will be this one right here. Okay, just to recap a little bit about inlay kits, there's different kinds of inlay kits. Of course, this is the this is the standard Jasper inlay kit that we went over. Uh, there's another company that I found. I wanted to, uh, for personal reasons, wanted to do an inlay on this box, as you can see right here. Uh, and I went to this company named Tartar, and I was able to um, do an inlay of a of a plane, of a um, bench plane. And they sell the, the inlay kits. This one particular one, it wasn't very expensive, uh, but it has six layers, six different templates that you lay on in sequence in order to get um, this outlay. This is a four inch one, they'd sell a 10 inch one. They have a lot of different kind of inlay figures. They got sailboats, flowers, um, tem uh, compass roses, all kinds of different things. Um, some of them really very nice, some of them a little bit crude, uh, but they're, it's a very nice company. The one drawback with it, and I just had to, to do that, is it won't take the standard uh, router template guide. It, they have one that's proprietary to their, to their templates because they make them narrower, <laughs> and they do that. However, the one that they do sell is um, white side and I'm a little confused about it because it's got the same number on it and everything but it's a different size template kit and it's about uh, it's about five or six dollars more than the one than the standard one that they sell you can't find it on white side but you can find it through the company company so if you're involved in getting their templates and want to use their templates you basically have to buy their inlay kit uh, this will work for for everything uh, on these too, but the original one will not work on their kit. And so this is a this is another example There's many many out there of what you can do with an inlay kit Okay, so this this is a finished piece with four bow ties in it uh, This connected two halves and this is uh, stopping the check on that little bow tie there And these are walnut on maple